As said in the last video, we're going to be covering the Windows Firewall today, so we are going to be back in our virtual machine here, uh, looking at the Windows Firewall, seeing what kind of ways we can use it and how we can implement it in our network. So the first thing is uh, getting to the firewall, obviously. So as we've done with everything else, we just hit start and type in what we're looking for, which is the firewall. Now you see a few different options come up, but there's two main ones that I want to focus on. The normal Windows firewall and the firewall with advanced security. So we're going to be working with the Windows firewall, but I'm actually going to show you the other way to get to it, which is, of course, through the control panel. So if you open your control panel and scroll down, you'll find the Windows Firewall. It's alphabetical, so it shouldn't be hard to find. It's one of the very last settings you'll see here. So if you click on Windows Firewall, it's going to open this window, which is the same thing as typing in Firewall and clicking this button right here. So on this screen, we can see a few different things. We have some other options on this side. But what is this really saying right now? we can look at our home or private network here and see that the firewall state is on we're blocking incoming connections that are not on the list of allowed connections uh... we're notifying when uh... the firewall decides to block something and in public networks our firewall is on it's blocking all connections and once again it is no notifying when the firewall blocks something new so this is just really your your outline to your firewall uh, this is the most simple thing right here and you can tell that your firewall is on and functioning but it might not be functioning exactly perfectly because this screen doesn't tell us everything so we're going to start from the top here and work our way down and the first one is allow a programmer feature through the firewall remember in our descriptions it said uh, that we were allowing certain features and everything else was blocked so if we look here we can choose to select different options or different services based on where we're connected. So for remote desktop, for example, do we want people connecting to our computer remotely? Well, on the home network, I'll allow it, but on the public network, by leaving this unchecked, we make sure that we're definitely not allowing it. So if something is unchecked right now, we are not allowing it. But I'm gonna uncheck this because I obviously do not want anybody remote desktoping into the computer but here you'll see a, a lot of different programs and these are just the basic Windows features but if you look at uh, the add al uh, sorry allow another program you can choose from a list of programs or find something exactly where it's installed you can go to your program files and you can say malwarebytes I want to block you so there's the path to malwarebytes and we could block that or we could just choose from this predefined list here and malwarebytes is in fact part of there but a lot of these we might not necessarily know what they are. So by clicking on something like SNMP Trap, which we learned about in the last video briefly, we can hit details and say this feature allows SNMP Trap service, traffic being received by this computer, Windows Media Player, allows streaming media over UDP. So this just gives you a brief description of what this service is going to be doing. And if you want to make the appropriate changes, you can do that. But now let's go back. The next one is notifications. So remember right here, this notification state, this is where you change some of that information. So right here it says on our home network we have a firewall on and we're going to be notifying when firewall blocks a new program or we could turn the firewall off if we want to, which is obviously not a good idea because you want your computer to be protected. And you can also block all incoming connections including those in the allowed list if you were in a situation where you just we're using your computer in public network saying you didn't want anything to be allowed and you could temporarily turn this on or use it for whatever else in any given scenario and also our public network remember so we have the exact same options and this screen right here is essentially our windows firewall screen right here except it's not listed out in descriptive term it's actually listed out uh, by the options and uh, different check boxes. So you can actually turn these different features on or off and these descriptions will change. Third one, Windows Firewall on or off. It takes you to the exact same screen. So obviously we want our firewall on but we do have the option to turn it off like I just discussed. We'll go back. You can restore default settings so if you made a ton of changes to your firewall and you just want to bring it back to the way it used to be right when you installed Windows, then you hit this, it's going to take you to another screen, you hit restore defaults, but we're not going to be focusing on that right now. 
and then advanced settings right here this is, this is the last one we're going to go into when we click advanced settings it opens up another window which we already have open down here so now we have two of them we'll close this one and if you remember when we typed in firewall there was firewall with advanced security which is exactly what we have up here now so those are the two different ways to get to this and you'll also remember the check firewall status on or off and allow a program through the firewall we've already discussed those screens so if you're looking to just check the firewall status to make sure it's on you can click that and it'll take you to the window so there's a few different ways to get to everything but now here on our firewall with advanced security I'm just going to maximize this window drag it out a bit uh, we see a few different things I'm going to be covering just this top one and the inbound and outbound rules so the first thing I'm going to do here is right click on the Windows firewall with advanced security and I'm going to hit properties so now we have these four different tabs here I'll focus on the first three and they specify a few different things so this one the domain profile says it specifies behavior for a computer when it's connected to a corporate domain private is for when a computer is connected to a private network and public is for when connected to a public network so if you're in a situation where on your domain you didn't want your firewall on uh, or whatever you know we're gonna usually stick with these recommended and default settings then this is where you could change it but if you were securing a machine and you came here and this firewall was turned off well then of course you want to turn it on so it's really easy to remember these options because all you're looking for is the default and the recommended so in all three profiles you want to make sure that your recommended and default are selected because your inbound connections you're blocking you don't want anybody connecting to you on a public network but your outbound connections you want to be able to connect to other things so you're going to allow that but if you didn't want to connect to anything on a public network just for the heck of it you could you could block that but there's a lot of different uh, things you can do here a lot of different combinations but I'll say it once more you want the recommended and default settings for maximum security. So now we're going to look at the inbound rules here. Here we'll see a ton of different uh, options that we might not necessarily know what they are. Some of them are green, some of them are grayed out. And the ones that are grayed out, you can see we can enable them because they're currently disabled. So if we were to look at something like core networking IPv6, we could disable that rule and it turns gray, but I'll turn it back on. So here we have just a huge list, and as you can see, there's tons of different information. It tells you what protocol, it tells you what port, the remote address, the local address. And as you can remember, if you watched the last video, which you really should have, these are a lot of the things we were talking about. We were talking about the port, the protocol, the address, all of this stuff is things we discussed. So you can see it here in the firewall actually coming into play. So this is a lot of to sort of take in at first because you don't necessarily you can't just look at a firewall and say oh yes this is secure this isn't secure but you have to sort of get an idea of what you're looking for if you do not want your computer to be using SNMP traps then it shouldn't be enabled or rather if you want your computer to be using SNMP traps then it should be enabled but something like Windows Media Player, if it was enabled, why would we be blocking Windows Media Player? It's not that big of a deal. Like I said, these are just a ton of different default rules. Uh, we're not going to look into them too much right now. This is more to open up your eyes and see everything. And we have the same for the outbound rules. So inbound rules was traffic coming into our computer. Outbound rules is what we're sending out. So what are we allowed to send out? We're allowed to send a remote assistance request but let's look at our inbound rules for remote assistance uh, same thing so inbound rules yes we're enabling these and we're allowing them on certain ports so as you can see a bit of a difference there and you can also look at the port numbers to sort of differentiate between the two get an idea uh, there's just there's a ton going on in the firewall so I can't describe everything but what I will quickly go over here because this is the main point of the video is creating new rules for your firewall so if you right click inbound and go new rule there's a few different options you have here so program you can rule the controls connections for a program port rule that controls the connections for a TCP or UDP port predefined or custom but predefined here 
is all of sort of the services that we already see in our list. So I'm not really going to touch on those because those should already be in place. A program would be finding the actual program path. So once again, I'll just use the Malwarebytes as, example. as an example. You'd come here and we say, I want to block Malwarebytes. And you'd continue on, uh, or sorry, let's actually, I'll actually show you that and walk you through it. So we'd go to Malwarebytes, we'd say, yes, I want to block this program, block the connection on all three profiles, and then we can name our rule. So that's a simple one for the program. Okay, now let's say we want to block the port. Click on port, go to ports and protocols, and as you can see in this example, you can say 80, 443, 5000 to 5010. So uh, let's just say we want to block ports like I just had there already. Oops, port 40, port 30, and port 50 to 51. Then we can block the connection, have it on all three profiles, and then name it. But the big one here is custom. So with custom, we can say, uh, let's block Malwarebytes. And you can select which service. You can say, apply to the, I don't know, let's just take a look at an example here. The remote registry service. And we could use the protocol uh, TCP, all ports, you can select here, give the range. I wanted this to apply to, uh, so which local IP address? I want this to apply to uh, 192, oh, pardon me, uh, 192.168.1.120, or you could use the range, so 120 to 125 and which remote IP address. I just want to say any IP address. I don't want anybody remotely to do this. Action is block the connection. Profiles all three profiles and we can name it. But what would that, what would this actually do? It would say, okay, Malwarebytes, if anybody is using Malwarebytes with the remote registry service and they're using a TCP port, doesn't matter which port, and they're coming from this local IP address, then we're going to block them because the action here is block. But just to sort of specify what that would mean is that, you know, in some weird situation where some hacker could use malware bytes, uh, you know, to access the remote registry service, then we'd be blocking them from doing it. So in this scenario, we're blocking someone on our local area network. Say this guy is just, you know, he's no good, he's not up to. He's not up to anything good o over there, so you're just deciding, okay, I'm going to block this guy. He's on our network. He's probably going to get fired soon. And which remote IP address? Just any IP address, because I don't want anybody remotely trying to do this. So it's a very odd and probably extremely unlikely, probably impossible scenario for something like this to happen. But it's just an example, so to, get, to give you the idea here. You can block programs. You can block services. You can block protocols, you can block remote ports, remote or sorry, local or remote ports. You can choose to apply a wide range of IP addresses, whether they're local or remote. You can allow connections, you can allow the connection if it's secured. Alright, so we can require the net connection to be encrypted, or we can just straight up block the connection like we were doing anyways. So there's a lot you can do here, and really the idea of this video is just get you used to this. Uh, you want to be able to look at your firewall and make sure it's turned on and then if you're required to block something like Telnet or block something like a hacker's IP address uh, then this way you would know how to do it and you don't have to use all these options you can just say any program right that's the default it doesn't matter what program the person's trying to use it doesn't matter what port they're on it doesn't matter, or you know, you could say, I just want this IP address and I want to block absolutely everything. So by selecting all these different options, uh, you can choose to block absolutely everything from somebody or allow specific things or block specific things. It's really just up to you. So I'm going to close this window 
and that's it for today's video uh, mostly just sort of <clears throat> outlining the firewall basics and getting you open to the idea of using your firewall and blocking connections.